I've had plenty of people ask me what my favorite editing plugins are, including you. So today I'll finally disclose that, but this isn't a top 10 video. I'm ranking every single plugin I own based on well, my preference. We'll check out each promotional ad or video and I'll let you know how they really perform. All right. Let's get straight to it. So as you can see, we have a tier list and we have S to F tier. S being the ultimate plugin that I use all the time, just a go-to plugin, pretty much amazing. A is gonna be still good, but I just don't prefer them as much. B tier is, it's all right. It's got its flaws, but it's also good in some areas. C tier is becoming borderline just garbage. And then as you can guess, jumping down to F tier, is just straight garbage. I wouldn't use it again. Now starting here, we got M Tutorial. Now this is a recent one that I've been able to use for a little bit now, but it's definitely the most recent purchase I've made. Let's, let's look at the video. Let me go ahead and put these on so I'm fully immersed. Okay, let's check this out. So yeah, it, like in the name, it's meant for tutorial type of videos. Now from what I've used from it, the outline, it has some really handy effects and some it has a highlighter effect. Like if you wanted to highlight something and also has zoom effects and stuff like that, it ha actually has a mouse effect where you can place your own mouse uh, pointer animation. But there are some things that I wish it had, like it doesn't have a straight highlight animation. So there's two types of highlight animations. There's one that has rounded off edges that is like a marker and it goes from left to right. And then there's another one that's like a box that scales in, scales up. It doesn't go left to right. And there's no way to change it to make it go left to right, having that square look. Right? So that's one of the things is there. And then some of the effects, it just seems like, like the mouse movement, you can't really adjust much with that. So just because of all of that and what I've been learning from it, uh, I'm gonna put it at A tier. I'm gonna go right there in A tier. Truly handheld. Now this is by another YouTuber, editing YouTuber, Dylan Bates, that is, what it says, it's a bunch of handheld effects. Now this has a lot of, while well, I'm searching for this, this has a lot of ways to adjust your handheld effect if you wanna add it, because sometimes you want that kind of look, and this has a bunch of different presets and a fully customizable preset it has a lot of ways you can switch it up. Now actually, I don't know if he's made an ad for it, but we'll check out one of his videos. Millimeter look. So it's got a nice subtle handheld look to it, but what we could do is push control T to bring in a title and I'll just drag this in underneath the adjustment layer. So now this title and background have the exact same handheld motion. It looks like it's motion tracked to the scene. But if I wanted to add a little bit of extra dimension to it, what I can do is actually copy. The See, so there's a lot of, of presets right here that show the handheld, there's just a bunch of different presets. And then there's a fully custom one. All of these motion movements are based off of real lenses because I used real cameras to achieve this. I've applied the 55 millimeter handheld look and we can play through and you'll see that it's got a much more natural motion to this. And you'll notice that right at 10 seconds, it doesn't have that ugly loop that you see in the other handheld effect. In fact, the loop point- Yeah, is that's another good thing. So. I'm pretty sure that, I mean, that's enough to see. 
Um, so that's about it. But for its functionality and what it's used for, it might not be, you know, some extravagant. There's a bunch of. Oh, what's the word? There's a bunch of different presets, even though there is a good amount, uh, but like a bunch of different effects and stuff to apply. It's simply based on a, a, a one effect, which is a handheld. Just strictly based off of that and how much I use it, when I need to use it, I'm going to put it at, I'm also going to put this at A tier because I do use it a good amount. All right, moving on to the next one. This might be a little difficult to read, but I know what it is. It's M Travel. Now, if we look at this, this one has a few, a few things that are kind of, uh, all right. M Travel 2. That's what it's called. Okay. Oh. Okay. Don't let go. Don't give up this rest for it's better not be copyrighted, otherwise there will be another track over this. So, yeah, that's M Travel 2. Now, I'll move this away. Now, from what I use, the main effect and what I... Let me actually bring this back. So, the main effect that I wanted to use this for, which you've probably seen it in some of my edits, is this right here. Traveling across the world kind of map effect. Now, that effect is great, right? I, I've used it multiple times and I've also paired it with other plugins to give it a cool effect. Actually, you know, I'll pop up a example right now. Welcome to Yuma, Arizona, the border with America and Mexico. Maybe you remember this bad boy, you've seen it. So I, I mainly got it for that effect and I figured, you know, cause it showed a lot of other map effects. Now it is good at doing that effect, but there are some stuff in there that I just wouldn't use myself as far as, I mean, there's some stuff that seems a little corny in there and that seems to be the one and only effect and it only has that style. You can customize the colors and stuff, but you can't really change the style. So because of that, I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it at B tier because it's all right, but I don't use it all the time. This next one. I use in every single project I make. Hands down, honestly, I don't know the last time I didn't use this plugin. I use it in every single one. And that is Motion Blur Plugin by Ryan Nangle. Okay. What's up, guys? Today I'm going to show you how to add that, motion. That was it. That was pretty much it. Right there. It's Motion Blur, right? What? Now, the one I have, he must have updated it because, well, one, this was six years ago. And there's a, a lot more levels. I don't even know what the exact amount is, but there's probably like eight, maybe eight different styles of motion blur that gradually get more and more and more. It just makes it look so much cleaner because it's adding that motion blur. And I use it in a lot of my, in every single project, in a lot of my effects. And I... Always talk. I've talked about it in my videos. It's just a great plugin, and I really enjoy having it. So, this is going to be S tier for me just because of how much I use it, and I can't go a project without it. News at 11 by I believe this is Pixel Film Studios. We're going to go check it out, just like every other one. Pixel Film Studios right. presents. Here we go. A professional 3D production pack for Final Cut Pro X. 
production packages are useful sets of tools, including trailer titles, lower thirds, on screen callouts, sidebar tools, chapter menus, 3D backdrops, freeze frames, media and text layouts, 3D comparison templates, countdowns, 3D titles, transitions, and video log end screens. Production package elements are designed for all digital content creators and valuable tools for professional video editors. Every preset is designed to work with all resolutions and aspect ratios. Perfect for mobile projects and social media campaigns. All presets are easy to use and fully customizable. Users can change the text contents, lighting and color, font type and size, keyframeless intro, exit animations, and much, much more. Yeah, so I think you get the gist of it. Uh, let's see if there's anything else significant. No, it just kind of goes over everything else. So I actually don't think I might have used it in some like segment graphics, but I don't think I've ever used this in an actual project, like a legit one. And that's because when I did use it, it was kind of difficult to work with. And I haven't tried to use this in a long time, but it was a little bit difficult to work with. And it was kind of just annoying to work with. And so I honestly don't see myself using this again. As of right now, it's going in F tier. This is an honest tier list. I'm not sponsored by any of these. Well, for one, because I'm not big enough to get a sponsor right now. But hey, maybe one day. So this is completely honest, just based off of my experience. Splits 2. Now this is, I've probably gotten this within the past year. I've got some things to say about this one, but we're going to look at the, we're going to look at the promotional video. Brett FX. That's what it is. Turn your ideas into okay, videos. We okay, go we got to an Art list. Here we go. That is Splits 2 by Brett FX. It is a good plugin. I've used it before, but there are a few things that, because I like to do the side-by-side -side effects, which you've 100% seen if you've watched other videos on my channel, going over my edits, I like to use that effect a good bit. And of course, with that comes the search for the best one for convenience and just, you know, getting that done. And so I came across this and I got it. One of the upsides about it is that there are presets that have like 20 boxes. If you wanted to use that much, there are very customizable presets with different boxes, different styles, different stuff like that. And animations, the boxes, especially with a simple side-by-side it's really weird because so during the example right here, if you have a side by side box and you want to have a black line in between separating them, it does the top of the box too, like an outline, right? And in order to only have that line separating the two, you have to like offset it and then it's not centered. And so you have to crop it just a little bit and it's just not convenient when it comes to that effect which is the main reason why i wanted to use it was to have those a convenient way to just kind of you know 
put it together, put the split screen, stuff like that. So that's an issue that kind of bothered me, but it, it is pretty customizable. As far as compared to others, I would put this at B tier because it's all right. I use it sometimes, but I wouldn't use it a lot or all the time. M Surface Tracker, which I haven't, I've experimented with it a little bit, but I haven't experimented or had the need to use it a bunch. Now that's not saying that it's an awful plugin. I just haven't had the need to track a surface like how it's designed to do. I have used it sometimes and it is pretty impressive, but Motion VFX M Surface Tracker. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, going back. Oh, whoa, wait, wait. what in the world is going on? So, yeah, it's... It's pretty impressive. I'm not going to lie. Maybe I should use it more. <laughs> So just right off the bat, that's super sick, especially for motion VFX in general. None of their plugins that I've used would be an F tier. So that's just a hands down, if you're wondering. Now this one from the plugin itself and the way it's designed and when I have used it, it seemed to work pretty well, just the tracking and everything to do with that. And again, I haven't really had the need. From that alone, I would put this plugin at, I put it at A, A tier. Yep, 3D orientation. Now this is the plugin, this is also from Ryan Nangle and its specific purpose is to turn anything to where you can, it's a 3D orientation, so you can rotate it you know, by that. All right, here we go. Check it out. This is also like three years ago. What's up, guys? Today, we're going to be doing this hologram effect. Before I get into the video, I just want to say that I'm having a And so that's, sale. that's the effect right there. So if we skip forward to where he actually used it, Go down to uh, 3D orientation, it's right here. And then I'm going to add that to my video clip. I don't think this is included in Final Cut Pro, so I'll leave the link to it down below. It's a free it's plugin. Not. So now once I've added that, I go up here to my parameters. You can see when I change these, it moves the screen recording in 3D space, which is pretty cool. So I'm just going to flip it around so that it looks like it's come from the phone screen. Yeah, so okay. that's how the effect works. That's its specific purpose is just to have it, you know, be able to have those settings and customization. And so because of that and its sole purpose, it does what it's supposed to. I don't know. This is a little bit tricky because I'm going to put this at B tier because there are other plugins that it has that included and a bunch more like movement and stuff like that. And so that's why I'm going to put it at B tier. So it's, it, it's okay. It does its purpose, but there are more the movement of the actual rotation is still a little bit weird. I don't know if it's linear or I think it is, but you're not able to customize that. And so there are some stuff, there is some stuff lacking from it that would apply it here. We're looking at another surface tracker from Pixel Film Studios. I remember seeing this years ago. This was three years ago that it came out. And as soon as I saw it, I was mind blown. 
Oh, there's not 4K on the video. That's going to bring the points down. No, I'm just kidding. All right, let's get straight to it. Pixel Film Studios presents the FCPX Surface Tracker. I've used this An a good bit too. Let's users track surfaces that bend and fold within Final Cut Pro. Track and apply video, photos, or text to surfaces that warp quickly and easily. Create fun and dynamic product advertisements in post. Simply drag and drop the FCPX Surface Tracker tool directly onto your media and open the Track Editor window. Click and drag to add points or click once to add a single point. Find a flat surface to start. Track forwards or track backwards. They've also made a lot of updates with this too that helps keep up with, you know, the... M1, M2. Create ship. and apply your surface mesh and then select and remove unwanted geometry. Export. That's it. Warp and bend your media to any surface. Apply motion blur to your track with ultra fast render speeds. FCPX Surface Tracker is compatible with absolutely any resolution, with free and frequent updates. Create an advertisement or simply entertain your audience. Track walking surfaces within Final Cut Pro with the FCPX Surface Tracker Tool Pack from Pixel Film Studios. It's a pretty great plugin, and I have used it a good bit with other because I've had it for years. You know, I've had more I've had more opportunity to use this uh, before, and so. It is a great plugin and it works great. And like you said, there is a lot of updates and it's kept kept up with recent times. And so it works well. I mean, you saw the video. It looks good. And to be honest, it is on the same level as Motion VFX with this one. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Next here is M frame. Like I said, I experimented a lot with different types of plugins. Now, this is an older motion VFX plugin that I got recent within the past year or so. And trying it out, I'm not going to lie, there was a bit of disappointment with it and just some of the options that you have with the plugin. So yeah, I just scrolled down a little bit and it was eight years ago. So, I mean, from when I have used it, there's just not that much customization when it comes to the style you want and how you want it to flow and, you know, animate in, come in. From the experience I had with it, I was a little disappointed after the payment. I'm not going to lie. So I'm going to go ahead and put this at the first C tier. It's borderline not. I would just rather use something else, to be honest. Next thing we got here, you can't read it, but I know what it is. It's the tracker, just regular uh, 2D tracker from Pixel Film Studios. I've experimented with a lot of these. So may, hopefully at, by the end of this video, you'll kind of get a idea of what the best of the best are out of the what I have here. Pixel Film Studios proudly presents FCPX Auto Tracker 2.2, Precision Point Tracking Tools in Final Cut Pro, updated again with a new interface and even more features. Track the position. Track the scale. And track the rotation of your footage. Attach images. Text. 
video files, and animations to your scene. With a simple click of a mouse, Tracker 2.2 features even more improvements to the track editor. Utilize the brand new track assist filter to track your footage more accurately than ever. Auto Tracker 2.2 analyzes media over four times as fast as the original Auto Tracker. It is pretty quick. And features improved accuracy. You can track footage in any project, no matter the size, thanks to automatically adapting resolutions. There are no limits to what you can create using the ultimate tracking tool for Final Cut Pro X. I said, a chief. They got some of these transitions back to back are starting to give me a headache. Precise motion tracking with effortless speed using the FCPX Auto Tracker from Pixel Film Studios. It works great. I would almost say it's the best tracker. Sometimes I'll use it if the built-in Final Cut tracker doesn't work. I'll sometimes go swap between them. Now, I will say this might have costed it S tier status. But from when I have used it, and I use it pretty frequently, when you apply an adjustment layer over on top, it kind of makes it glitch out a little bit. Let's say you want to change the scale or you want to add like a animation in, which I do a lot. I add adjustment layers over a long list of layers to move everything, right? Transition. And so it gets a little wonky whenever you put a an adjustment layer over it. And so uh, I am going to say, because I can't say that's like a... That's something other, the accuracy and just the overall user face is amazing. I love it and it's quick, but that's got to put it at A tier because it's just not, it's not, it's not S tier status. That's all I'm going to say. Motion tools again by Dylan Bates. There's another application that you probably know of called motion, Apple motion, which is heavy on the, it's like the after effects for Final Cut. It has a lot more tools, like what the plugin's called, Motion Tools, than Final Cut itself has for whatever reason. And so pretty much what he did was, I'm gonna show you the video. I just dropped a huge update for my Motion Tools plugin, which was one of my okay. most popular plugins for Final Cut Pro. For those of you that don't know what Motion Tools is, I've essentially jumped inside of Apple Motion and found over a hundred different effects and tools that are not over inside of Final Cut. And I've gone ahead and just published those so that you have easy access and you don't need to jump back and forth between both programs. In fact, you don't even need Apple Motion to use all of these tools. Yeah, that's pretty much the, the gist of what the plugin is supposed to do. So I will probably... This isn't, this is more of like an extension type of deal, but I would say I would probably still be doing just, I'd still be doing what I do if I didn't have it. Like I couldn't not make a project without it, right? No, I could make a project without it. That's what I was trying to say. So I'll probably put it around halfway. It's got some good stuff. But it is it's a lot of extra tools that's kind of just moved over. It's not bashing the actual plugin itself. It does what it's supposed to. I just only use a few of what's in there sometimes. Pixel Film Studios presents Stabilized Tracker. I'm actually going to search and see what it's actually called, but that's pretty much what it's called. Stabilizer 2.0. FCPX Stabilizer. Professional Shot Stabilizer for Final Cut Pro X. Correct unwanted camera movements quickly and easily by stabilizing any shot using a selected on-screen position point, allowing users to effortlessly achieve polished steady results in seconds. Featuring updated motion stabilizing technology. Apply the stabilizer effect to your media 
Open the new FCPX stabilizer track editor window. Place the tracker on any desired point in your scene and adjust the search area for more accuracy. Adjust the quality for a smoother track. Track your scene in the track editor window and analyze forward or reverse motion for the best it's, possible outcome. Export fast. the data to your media for amazing great. results. Stabilize by tracking the position of a subject. Track the rotation of any object or person for quick corrections of mild to extreme movement. Fully stabilize any scene by tracking any and all parameters. Apply to any aspect ratio, shot duration, frame rate, and resolution including mobile, 1080p, 4K, and much more. And blazing fast tracking speeds, over four times faster than version 1.1. FCPX Stabilizer, professional shot stabilizer for Final Cut Pro X from Pixel Film Studios. Yeah, and I know and I've actually talked about it in my most recent videos, I pretty much use this in the majority of my projects that I work on. I use it some way, mainly for comedic effect, but it also can be used for some pretty cool effects and just being able to stabilize and do it that quickly is amazing. And just the user face, like it said, it's been updated multiple times and I am going to put this at Nah, I'm just kidding. It's going up to S tier. Yeah, it's that good. I'm not lying. It's that good. I use it all the time. I haven't really had that many problems other than it needed an update and then it wasn't working. I got so frustrated over nothing just to realize all it was was an update. And yeah, that's about it. M Blueprint. This is also a recent one that I've gotten within the past year, out maybe six months, and I've used a lot of its features frequently. It's got a, some pretty cool effects. One of the main effects I used it for was, was in my most viewed breakdown, and it was this right here. Today, the hotel has 339 rooms, 2.6 million square feet, houses 486 luxury residential condominiums. The Trump sign on the front of the building is 20 feet tall. The penthouse sold for $20 million in 2022, and the cost to build it was $847 million. It has 27 different elevators. M Blueprint. I haven't even reached into that area that much using the models and stuff. But it's got some cool titles. It has on, a lot of on screen effects. I think I used that. Yeah. See if it shows the drawing. Yeah. This one, I would say, is a pretty good, pretty good plugin. I'm not gonna lie, but it, it it does have a specific niche or purpose, which is obviously the blueprint style, and. I would put this at A tier because I still do use some of the effects that is included in the plugin, even if it's not the actual blueprint itself. Man, this is reaching back. I have had this one. This is probably one of the first plugins I really started to mess with. And I made posted videos years ago on my Instagram using this, but it's, Glow, I'm just going to search Glow by Pixel Film. And this effect was going on for a while. This was really pro popular then. This was about like four four years ago. Pixel Film Studios presents FCPX Brush Glow, a stylized drawing tool for I haven't Final used it in a while. 
Quickly add stylized hand-drawn graphics directly to your production without ever leaving Final Cut Pro. Simply drag the generator over your media in the timeline. Draw directly on the canvas and save. This drawing tool is completely customizable. Edit all aspects of the stroke and adjust the glow controls as desired. Use FCPX Brush Code to add new creative ideas to your project. You can draw one frame at a time with frame by frame mode. Or use subsequent mode to hold frames and apply new drawings. I've done both of those. Your imagination is the only limitation when using brush code. You can enhance any scene with a single brush animation. Or get creative and stack multiple brush animations to create more complex designs. This is bringing me back to when I use it. Minimize effort and maximize your creative power with FTPX Brush Book. Yeah, it's pretty good. I haven't used it in a while, so I'm sure they've updated it and applied more stuff. But it's pretty good. When I did use it, it was a good plugin. Now, I'm trying to remember, I did the frame by frame a lot, and that that's very tedious because just frame by frame in anything can get annoying. And so obviously it would take a while to make a project, but that's just how it is whenever you want to do, it's like stop motion pretty much, right? And so from my experience of using it, I think I'm going to throw this into, I'm going to throw this into B tier. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to stick with that. I'm just going to stick with that. That's where it's going to be. M motion VFX restyle. Yeah, that's pretty much its sole purpose is to restyle. It's got a lot of titles. It's got a lot of overlays. It's got a lot of a bunch of stuff. It's got a bunch of stuff included, uh, effects and stuff like that. So I would say from my experience, I use it a lot. Maybe not a bunch, a bunch, but pretty frequently, especially when it comes to, it's got really cool title effects. And just if you want to add some creativity and a specific you know, unique look to what you're editing. It's a good, it's definitely a good, a good one to go with. And so because of that, there's nothing, I mean, there's not too much to criticize about it. Uh, so I think I'll, I'll put it at a tier. It belongs there. I wouldn't say it's the top, the top tier of, of the plugins that I have, but it is up there. It is up there. Pro zooms. By Dylan Bates, once again, he makes a lot of, from him, the basics that you need inside of Final Cut, like zooms and just for convenience in general, I all I use them all pretty much from him with the handheld, the zooms, you know, the extra tools and stuff like that. And so we're going to check this out. And this is pretty self-explanatory. It's zooms, but it has a lot of features that you can use Within. I am in my project, I'll just go into my titles and locate FCB's Pro Zooms. In here you can see we have a whole bunch of variations of the effect. What we're going to do is take a look at Pro Zoom first. So I'll go ahead and click and drag this onto my timeline. What you'll see is this adds a nice on-screen control for you to click and drag around on your screen to find out where you want to zoom into. So let's say I want to zoom in on this house here with the green pool or whatever that is. And now if I push play, the camera is going to automatically animate and zoom in over there very very smoothly now when it gets to the end of the animation it's going to go ahead and zoom back out so it does it all for me i don't need to mess around with keyframes it's just very intuitive to use this on-screen control to drag it around to wherever you like 
and now we're going to apply Pro Burns. So I'll drag this down onto the timeline. It's going to look just like the Pro Zoom tool. However, rather than being limited to two seconds, the animation is going to take the entire duration of this title. And then you can change the zoom style to ease and constant, which is what I use a lot. And then like accelerate. There's a bunch of different styles. And so I am going to put this at S tier because I use it all the time and it's got just the right amount of customization and everything you need when it comes to basics like that. Oh, captionator, captionator, captionator. We're gonna check this out. Now this is a shorts reels type of plugin that is what it's mainly used for, but you can use it in long form if you want. Okay, we can just check out this video. Auto-generated captions in Final Cut Pro have been a long requested feature, and thanks to Brian Murray, it is finally here. So that's pretty much what it is. There, so now there is a lot of customization, I will say that, to the actual captioning itself. Like you can have different animations and apply different things like that. And I have used it a lot when, I, when I've when i needed to work on shorts and do those types of things. But within the recent updates and just itself, I have noticed that sometimes the timing will be a little bit off or it'll just be off in general. So I think I'm going to put it at B. I'm going to put it at B tier because there are some stuff that it still needs to improve on to get there to that status for its purpose. It's, it's, you know, it works. It works. M film look. That's pretty much the trailer for it and does exactly what you think it would do. It does color grading. It has a lot of features on it that I've seen and I haven't used it too much because there is other plugins that I prefer for color grading and it's on this list. But the overall use of it and from the features that I've seen and I've experimented with, I'm going to put this at A tier because it is an overall good plugin to use for that cinematic style that you want. You know, you know what I'm saying? Add motion. Here it is. By FX Factory. In this tutorial, using the on-screen controls, you can position the A and B points anywhere, even off screen. In the parameters, choose takeoff and landing easing styles. So it does exactly what to set how long you want the, animation to the title is. It adds motion. Now let's play but there's a lot more customization parameters. when it comes to, like you just see there. I mean, it makes it look a lot smoother than it would with the generic Final Cut built-in type of movement. Because you can change it to linear. You can change the takeoff landing right here. And just a bunch of different styles and you can hold certain areas and you know if you want to get the plug in you can check it out but i use it every single project i make it's that good i use it any single time i want to add movement to an element that's coming to the into the video or even just to zoom in and like i said about the the orientation effect earlier is this has that as well. You can adjust the orientation of what you're wanting. And I've used that a lot. And actually, here's an example from a video I did last year. Where does the term zombie come from? A zombie is a mythological undead creature that is created through the reanimation of a corpse. And so it's an overall great plugin. I would say this is like a must have if you want to go 
anywhere with editing in general, just adding good looking movement on elements. And if you want to zoom in and out, stuff like that. In my personal opinion, one of the best plugins I use. Very useful. So let's go on S tier. M Puppet, another one from Motion VFX that I have. Let's go ahead and check this one out. So it's an animation tool for photos, if you haven't picked up on that yet. Titles too. Never seen a car do that. Yeah, you can make some pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. Seems. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a pretty good. I've used it a few times. I don't use it all the time, but when I have used it, it worked pretty well. You do have to cut out the subject that you want, and then you use it that way. You know, if you want to look at more tutorials, you can look that up. But as an overall plugin, I guess it depends on the content you're making. But for what it's used for, I'll probably put it at A tier. I'll put it at A tier because it is good for what it's used for. And I have used it and have made some pretty sick scenes in projects. For instance, here's an example. You all know John Rich. John Rich is a multi-platinum award-winning country music legend. Slice Pop. This is another split screen effect. And this is the last one actually in this list. So let's see how it is. It's by Stupid Raisins. That's what the company is called. Hi, I'm Dustin with Stupid Raisins. And I want to show you Slice Pop, the best Final Cut split screens on the planet. Here are 10 reasons you should use Slice Pop to make split screens. Reason number 10, you'll look professional. So, yeah, it just, it has a bunch of different ways you can apply a split screen. It's got animations like you see here. And yeah, it's a really, I mean, it's a good all around split screen maker. But I will say there are some things that I just wish were more customizable in a sense, as far as like the animation it's pretty much only one animation. Like you can have it animated coming from up or down like direction, but, and there's a few other things, but it is, I use it a lot. Like if I use a, a split screen plugin, I'm using this one. And so I'm going to put it, it's not necessarily S tier status. Well, I mean, uh, for me, actually, yeah, I'm going to put it at S tier. I'm going to put it at S tier. Because it is, I use it a lot and it is pretty useful as far as the split screen go. So that's going to go S tier. A little hesitant there, but welcome, Slice Pop. M Music Video 2. This is the second one. I've looked at, there was a lot of people hyping up M Music Video 2 and I looked at the two um, between M Music Video 1 and then 2 and the second one. Clearly seemed better, so that's why I got it. All right, let's check and it out. Music video too, with YC imaging. Times close, I whittled them down, stick it to them by sticking around. Yeah, so it's it's got a lot of modern, well, I mean, modern effects, I would say, because, you know, film grain and all that stuff that's been around for a while, but... As far as the modern types of effects for music videos and just hype, making things hype in general, it's got a lot of that. It's got a lot of different 
cool effects that you would want to use. And yeah, that's pretty much the purpose of this plugin. I do use its effects a lot. Yeah, that's about it. It's got a lot of film grain, different like formats, different, there are handheld effects and stuff like that. And so just going off that, I'm gonna go Put this at A tier. It's not quite S tier yet. Not quite S tier. Keeper. I got this a while back and pretty much its sole purpose is to cut out people, cut out the backgrounds of people inside of editing, right? If I show you a the video, then you'll know what I'm talking about. And isolate a person that wasn't shot on green screen. Don't believe me? It's as simple as a drag and drop and no rotoscoping involved. Sheffield Softworks Keeper uses machine learning to isolate people and remove the background from shots with no green screen required. I'm going to show you this effect in Final Cut Pro, but it also works in Motion, Premiere Pro, and After Effects as well. You can find it in the effects browser under Sheffield Softworks. Yeah, I mean, it works. I've got a clip on it my works timeline good for what with it's a talking used for. head. I'd like to ice. The person is isolated from the background. If I play through, you can see that this works really well right out of the box. There is no tracking going on here. Keeper uses machine learning to analyze each frame on its own. In the parameters, I can output the composite that we see here, or choose a luminance mat or a colored representation of the mat with the background. There are further quality settings you can choose between. Use low for a preview while you're compositing and set it to medium or high for final output. But on my MacBook Pro, high plays back just fine. You can further refine the mat with standard mat controls below this. I'll make some. So it's got some options when it comes to customization and that's pretty much what it's used for. But it's specifically used for people, right? You can't cut out objects, you can't cut out other stuff that you would wanna cut out in a video. It's just specifically used for people and it works, it works good if you have a solid background and stuff like that, if it's set up properly. And so I will put this at, I'll put this at B, Audio Visualizer from Pixel Film Studios. There are some things that I do have to say about this one. Now I'll go to export example. So yeah, that's what it's that's what it's used for. That's its main purpose is just to visualize audio if you wanted to. And now from when I used it, it worked well for what it was, but it did take it it takes a long time to work. And so I'll also put this at at B tier. Cuz yeah, I mean it's all right, but there are some bugs in there that that needs to be fixed. Color Finale. I know you've heard me talk about this before. Color Finale 2, to be exact. It's kind of similar to Da Vinci. Obviously nowhere near as close to the complication or how complicated Da Vinci is in color grading. I haven't really tested the color grading in Da Vinci that much, but from the looks of it, it looks a little complicated, I'm not going to lie. But this has a lot of features that you would want inside of a color grading software. And it has, you know, white balance and just simple things on the side if you needed it. And you can apply LUTs or automatically have it switch from log to... And so you're able to do a lot with it. And it has a bunch of different stuff that I can't get into right now, but if you want to check it out, I would definitely do recommend. This is what I use every time I go to color grade, but there's always, there's always issues. There's always issues. It does bug out sometimes. I'm not going to lie. 
This is honest, being honest. It bugs out sometimes and it glitches, but the good outweighs the bad in this situation. And so I use a lot and it is really good, but sometimes it will like bug out and it'll act a little bit weird. And so for that, it's not S tier status, even though I wish it was, if it didn't do that, it would be. It's A tier status. That's what it's, that's just what we're gonna go with. Moving on to M Flare 2, we're on the final three. Here it is. Start from the beginning. All right. But so that's M Flare. That's pretty much it. It works very well. It has a built-in tracker for adding the M Flare, and I've also talked about this as well. This plugin, at least I believe I have, and it just it it, it works really well because you're able to track it to the light or even off-screen if you wanted to, and then it'll move the flare like if it was on the camera, you know, going through and hitting the lens. And so it is It is pretty good, and I'll use it if I need to make a shot more cinematic. Do I want to make it S tier status? Because itself, when I do use it, it works very well. Oh, because I can't think of any bugs. I'm going to make it S tier status. I'm not going to lie, I'm going to make it S tier status because I can't think of any bugs or issues I've had with it. And it works very good for the for you know added effects and and making it very cinematic so s tier status it is final two here we go m tracker 3d i'm sure you already know about this because a lot of people do especially in the editing realm i remember seeing this video for the first time too and i was mind blown Like that's sick. Some crazy stuff. Yep, I use this one all the time as well. Now, there is another plugin called MO2 that you have to get separately, and it may be a little bit confusing because some of this stuff is only achievable with MO2, but M Tracker 3D itself is only the tracker, but it also does have like different drop zones, different. They've made updates where there's like a hologram effect, there's different models that you can use, you know, planets, stuff like that, you know? And so it is extremely well put together. And I use it a lot. If I ever need to track a 3D space, I'll use it. And so from my personal experience using it that much and how it's performed, I am going to make this 
S tier, 100%. I would fully recommend this plugin if you are wanting to do any type of 3D tracking, stuff like that. It works extremely well. M Roto AI, the last one. What do I think about this one? You're about to find out. Here it is. Last one. That's Emroto AI. It is incredibly impressive. And the way you're able to completely cut out a person and track as well. You can cut out people. You can cut out an object. You can cut out whatever you want because it has a little brush tool that you go over and it'll select the areas. And so from... Me using it, I use it a good bit, especially if you want to cut out certain things, like what it's used for. They also have an expansion pack where you can add certain effects. And like, I'll, I'll like to cut out stuff and add like a drop shadow behind it or add certain effects to a different part of the screen or whatever subject I want to select. It works pretty well. And so with that, the final Mroto AI, what is it? When is it going to be? It's going to be at S tier. S tier. And there are your answers on what I think. So that's it. If you want to check out some of these put into action, you can click right here. If not, I'll see you.